Welcome back to Coding Shorts. This is episode 101. Today I want to talk to you about ASP.NET Core and its health checks. I want to introduce you to the concept of health checks and why they can be useful in your own projects. Make sense? I did want to make a quick shout out. I've just redesigned my blog and website. You can see it at wildermuth.com and I'd love your feedback and what you like and what you don't like. There's over 2,000 blog entries there that go back uh, 17, 18 years now. So feel free to go and look and search and see if there's any topics that you might find interesting. I actually have a new blog post, which is an extension of this topic to talk about health checks and open API, but I'm not going to cover it in this video. If you need that, go ahead and follow the link down in the description. Let's get started. So I'm in a pretty simple project called Shoe Money. I've used this example a number of times before and it exposes an API and then I have some other stuff, but I'm gonna focus on this little API project. I'm gonna start with our program.cs. And I want to support the idea of seeing if this API is up or not. And that's the whole purpose of this idea of health checks as a way to call a certain endpoint and go, can you tell me whether this is up, whether it's degraded or whether it's down? And the way you would do this is you can just say builder dot services dot add health checks. You'll just need to also map it math health checks and you give it an URL and the typical one you're going to see is health. This is not what it has to be. It could be API health. It could be whatever you want, but this works in the way we want it to. Now if we run this, you can see here I have a just a quick get to that health endpoint. Let's see what it does returns back and says healthy. Now the default health check basically says, okay, we're here and we can be responded to. That's all the simple health check does. And so by just adding the health checks here, we're not actually end up doing a whole lot. What we'd really like to do is have the ability to check things that are actually important. If you come in here, type microsoft.extensions.diagnostics. You can see there's a number of extensions that support different kinds of health checks. What we're actually looking for is health checks.entity framework. Here we can see it's from Microsoft and we can go ahead and download it and bring it into our project. And then here where we're adding the health checks, we can actually add DB context check. And here you're just gonna put in your context object and it'll actually execute a check into the DB context to make sure the server is available. It executes a very simple query just to see whether the server is alive. So if we come back to our test here, it says it's healthy, but if we bring up our log, we can actually see what it did a select one. So basically it went out to the server, did one execution, not of even any data, just seeing whether it could reach that and have that query executed. So a really simple way to check essentially the connection string or the health of the under underlying data store. And we know this works because if we open up our app settings, there's my connection string. Let's uh, change the database name and then go test this again. And because it's seeing a dead connection, it can't find the server, so it's saying, hey, I'm unhealthy. And more importantly, I'm returning a 503 to say the service isn't available. You can customize some of this, but effectively this allows you to probe into the system to make sure it's healthy. And you're gonna see in container services and Kubernetes and other things like that, that this healthy notion is gonna be used to make sure that your node or your pod are available and to reboot it if they're not available or to go ahead and try to create replicas that maybe are healthy. That is essentially the idea behind this. There is a project out there called ASP.NET Core Diagnostics Health Checks for non-Microsoft health checks. Microsoft has a handful, but the idea that they wanted to do was provide a number of different kinds of health checks. And I'll put this link into the description as well in case you want to go here. But you can see it's checking to see whether Amazon S3, Azure's Application Insights, Tables, Key Vault, etc., Document Databases, Dynamic DB. You're going to see all these different types of services. A lot of them data stores, but something like Identity Server or SendGrid are ones that aren't really specified to that. You might see SQL Server here, and the difference here is it's looking for a SQL Server without having to go through Entity Framework, because often if you're using something like Dapper or doing hand-built, uh, you're going to want to be able to check SQL Server as well. This is a collection of other custom health checks that are out there. Now, in fact, depending on what your organization might need, you might want your own health checks. So we come back here, let's show you what that looks like. Back in program, 
program, we can actually say add check. I'm going to check for paused server. This is just going to be some code that can actually execute that check. So if I have a simple check like this, I can certainly do that. Now in our case, I'm going to implement a new property down here called pause server, and I'm going to set it to false because I don't want this to be true. And I might have other systems that are depending on this, but this is more of a contrived example than a real example. And I can just implement this by having a Lambda because this is going to accept a function that returns health check result, which I'll need to bring that namespace in healthy. But we're going to actually want to test this. And because we can't inject it in here, I'm going to go ahead and get it from the builder. I'm just going to use that closure and say our configuration, get value, boolean, and I'm going to give it that paused, pause server. And I'm just going to capture that as paused. And all I'm going to return here is say paused. If it's paused, I'm going to actually say unhealthy, otherwise dot healthy. But the logic of how you do this really depends. One of the cases I use with one of my clients Clients, is I'm actually checking to see whether the licensing database has the right information that's been configured right for a particular client. This way we know when we're checking the health that immediately we can see what the error is. Let's go ahead and see this actually work. So if I run this and I go test, now it's saying healthy because both of those tests that we created here work. But what if we opened up our app settings and we said, go ahead and pause that server. Now it's going to say it's unavailable. That is unhealthy just because there's something in the system that that's telling it that it's not healthy. Notice I'm not rerunning it even. I'm just changing the configuration and it's capturing that. So we're healthy again. But often what you'll want to do instead of creating a little lambda here, and this can get very messy, is I'm just going to create a new folder called health checks. And I'm going to create a new one called paused server health check. Go ahead and say namespace jumoney.api.health checks. Not sure why it didn't create this for me. My version of Visual Studio has been a little wonky lately. You probably saw there's some font issues over here in test. So hopefully that'll be fixed in a patch soon. And I'll just call this our paused server health check. And this is going to implement the iHealthCheck interface. Let's bring in that interface. And I'm going to go ahead and implement that interface, right? And all it does is it actually calls it, though it calls it async, it's going to give you some context about the health check. We can also inject things like, let's go ahead and inject our iConfiguration. So you can see this is a little bit more malleable for the kinds of things you want to do. But essentially, it's not going to change a lot from what we have here. I'm just going to copy this body here and say, let's go ahead and do the same check. Of course, instead of getting our configuration there, we're going to get it from the injected class level. And then this is complaining. Now we need a task that returns this. Now we're not doing anything asynchronous, so I'm just going to wrap this in task from result and put it all in there so that can return it as an object. Now this should perform the same way we saw the other one, but again, we're wrapping it inside of a class that is that check, and maybe you could share that amongst different projects if you needed. And so the way we refactor this, I'll leave that commented out for now, is we can say add check, and we're gonna just give it our new class, paused server health check. So you could certainly create an extension method that hid those details. And we just need to give it a name, just like we did before, paused server. And now let's restart this, because I change something in program, it never picks it up with the new injection stuff. And we can see our send request should return fine unless we change this to true. And now it's saying it's unavailable because we have that check that is failing. This will all be dropped directly in the logs. And what's interesting is if we also go back over here and let's break this again by putting an extra underline on here and we test it again, it should come back as unhealthy. But it'll take a minute because it's timing out looking for that server. And then the logs, it'll actually show you pause server had an unhealthy status as well as health check for the shoe context. And so this is going to give you some more information about what failed. If we go back to our health check, we could also say server is paused. Now this information isn't necessarily going to be returned to the user, but it will end up in the logs if you want to be able to tell it a message about why it might be unhealthy. Make sense? 
So health checks have been around quite a while, but I've never really dug into them for anything more than the simple is the server up health checks. But as we build more, whether they're microservices or just monolith services, where we just have a lot of different pieces working with each other, we're going to need more clever ways to know whether a system is up and running. And health check can really help us do that, especially when we start deploying at clients or into the cloud and in individual instances or container apps. This is going to be even more important so that these checks can go ahead and look and say, you know, this isn't configured right. There's no key for this. The password hasn't been set. So that when you are trying to debug some of these problems, you can very quickly get information about what's happening on the server as well. Hope that makes sense. Again, if you got this far, like and subscribe. We're headed towards 1,700 subscribed. That's awesome. I appreciate every subscription and every thumbs up I get. And also, go visit my New Look blog, and you can visit the discussion I have about health checks and open API in a new blog post. That's going to be at wildermuth.com. You can see it here on the screen, and of course, it'll be down in the description. Till next time, this has been Sean Wildermuth.